I don't know. He did this, you didn't? Good evening and welcome to the Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. This meeting is being recorded, televised, and viewable on Swift Hill Channel 19, ITC Channel 168, and the Brookings County YouTube channel. And I'll call this meeting to order. Richard, would you do a roll call? We do not need to do that this evening because we have no one on. No one on the phone. No Perfect. one on the phone and everyone is in attendance. So. Perfect. Approval of minutes. Is there a motion? So no moved. Moved. Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Vanderwall. Please do a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Items to be added to the agenda by commission members or staff? That'll be in during my director's report, staff report. Okay. Invitation for citizens to schedule a time on the commission agenda for items not listed. Mr. Sanderson is here, I'd like to speak, if anyone else would. Okay. Uh, disclosure of conflicts of interest, relationships to applicants or ex parte communication. Yes, I will be recusing myself from 9D, that's flat 12, and from 15, that's conditional use 15. Anything else? Anything else? Motion for approval of agenda. So moved. Motion by Bartley. Second. Second by Klein John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, this time, Mr. Sanderson.
step forward and sit down and state your name and Jan Sanderson. We got five minutes. Okay, go. Uh, I've scrapped my project, so I'm not here to uh, twist your arm. I've just got a couple things I wanted to say. Um, <clears throat> I'm. I thought I was the only one alive left on the commission when the uh, ordinance to uh, uh, the 35-acre ordinance was put into effect, but. Richard corrected me, and Barb Pellcamp is still alive. So, um, <clears throat> so I thought I'd go back and tell you what our original intent for that ordinance was. It was not to keep sons or members of the family to move out to the farm. At the time, there were some um, trailer parks getting started in the county. And the Zoning Commission had no power to stop them. And that's why we started this ordinance. And it seems like over time it's evolved into a, a blanket approach to tell anybody who wants to move out in the country, you can't do it unless you have 35 acres. Well, 35 acres, I've made my living on 35 acres for 45 years. So uh, I, I think it's unreasonable and I don't think that it makes sense anymore. And it, I didn't think it made sense then, and I don't think it makes sense now. If, uh, I mean, the average age of a farmer now is in the 60s. You open the shopper, it's auction after auction. I don't think we should be putting um, roadblocks in front of people that want to move out to the farm and help them keep it going. And uh, uh, Spencer, I think you asked me what uh, does my daughter earn half her income? It would take a whole room full of accountants to tell what any farmer made or what their net worth was. It, it really, uh, uh, Sterud, who was a, a commissioner at the, uh, the same time with me, he said, all you're going to do with that is make people liars. So I don't think that should be an issue. Um, it's up to you, but I mean, uh, I had a heck of a time finding help uh, this year. We usually make about half our income from picked strawberries, and I couldn't find any help. And if, if, if farmers want to find help, they better start looking now, because there's none out there. And uh, I just went, uh, I think you told me it was Intermills that was here the month before I, the only reason I got from people for turning my uh, um, mind down was that you had done the same thing to Intermill the, the month before. Well, in my mind, those should have been no-brainers. Pass them. Give them a variance. That's why it's in the ordinance. The ordinance wasn't designed to keep people from moving out to the farm. I guess that's all it's, That's all I really got to say. Oh, one other thing. Uh, I thought it was interesting, uh, Mr. Ross, who was talking, uh, uh, has the uh, organic garden north of town, uh, was talking about the possibility of a development. And there's, there's a lot better use of an acre of ground than to grow corn and beans anymore. I mean, there's a, we're a big community, growing community. There's a, a lot of uh, uh, demand for uh, specialty kinds of developments. And that's where you really need to use your, your uh, power. That's all I got to say. Thank you. We will now convene as the Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission. I call this meeting to order and I'd like to welcome those in attendance at tonight's meeting. The Brookings County Planning Commission is a nine member commission whose function is to recommend approval or disapproval of land use plans, zoning ordinances, subdivision plans, and amendments there of the Brookings County Commission. 
The Commission makes its recommended recommendation based upon the adopted comprehensive plan for the physical development of the unincorporated areas of Brookings County. As a matter of policy, all motions are made in the positive. After a motion is moved and seconded, it is open to debate. Those supporting the motion shall in turn give their reasons. Those opposing the motion shall then offer their reasons. After everyone has been given a chance to be heard, the Commission shall recommend approval or disapproval based on the testimony and information presented. A simple majority vote of a quorum of members present of the Planning and Zoning Board in attendance is required to forward the recommendation. Agenda item 2021, pre plat 001, preliminary plat, excuse me, Prim preliminary plat of lots 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, 3, and 4 in lot B, Hafner edition in government lots 2 and 3 in the southeast one third of the southwest one fourth of section 22 township 112 north range 47w of the fifth primary in brookings county is there a motion so moved motion by vanderwall second second by diedrich richard would you read the staff report Twenty twenty one pre pre plat zero zero one Brookings Built Green Inc. by Dustin Hendrickson is presenting a preliminary plat for subdividing property into four lots on the southeast side of Lake Hendricks. The property is currently nine point six acre parcel with an existing house and two detached garages. Uh, lot one is these figures are going to be a little bit different because they've updated their site plan from this on there. I can read that. Um, lot one is 20,340 square feet. Lot two is 20,987 square feet. Lot three is 22,686 square feet. And lot four is 308,089 square feet. All the lots exceed exceed the 20,000 square foot requirement and he is showing a proposed plat and then driveway on the south side of the property uh, the, and that has been updated also to reflect where the current uh, driveway is and the utility easement that goes along there and it is uh, the setbacks have been changed to 75 feet from the highest known watermark on the uh, on the plat on the proposed preliminary plat and it meets the comprehensive plan of the Lake Park and then the district down there and the subdivision ordinance. This is the original, the first plat, which is, I'll go over the correct one here. This is the plat on a beacon map showing the proposed subdivision here. This is the existing lot the way it is right now, 9.4 acres. This would be lot number four would be the biggest lot, the 300 and some thousand square feet. This is lot number three, two, and one, that those three contain um, at least 20,000 square feet. It shows the beacon map the way it is currently um, surveyed out, parceled out. And this is the updated site plan version here that you all received this evening. Um, they moved the setback from the highest known watermark, which is this line right here, 75 feet back. So this shadowed area is the buildable space area. The driveway would come down off the existing driveway, contain utility easement in there. So the existing driveway with the utilities, you know, approximately in that location on there. And these existing buildings would be just outside of the uh, buildable space area on there, but they would be allowed to stay there as long as this existing garage down there on that one and this one because they were built prior to uh, zoning ordinance requirements. We would not make them, require them to move. 
So the applicant is here this evening and the lots do all meet the size requirements for septic system on there and it would be served by rural water. So um, that's all that I have. The applicant has some more to add or you've got questions for him. Thank you. Uh, the applicant would set forward, uh, clearly state your name and you tell us if you got anything to add to Richards. My name is Dustin Hendrickson. Uh, I don't really have anything to add. I think he covered everything. Okay. I have a question. Lot four does not look 15 times as big as the other lots to me. And that's what the 308,000 square feet would be. I was thinking the same thing, but does it's, it follow the dotted line? It's that whole it's that whole section, so you'd have like eight acres approximately. Okay, that whole shows, piece. It's that's just the buildable area, I believe. Okay, so that doesn't go by the measurements that you show there. Yeah, the the three hundred and eight thousand is not that that blob. That's just the buildable area. The three hundred and eight thousand goes up and around the pond, and all the way around. So that piece, I believe, is the the three hundred and eight thousand because there's roughly eight acres left on one piece. Yes, the buildable site would be from this west lot line, including the balance of the property, along meandering along the, the waterway back up to the road and along the fence, okay, the field it here. It just doesn't show the property line on there. Right. This, they shadowed in the buildable space there on lot four, right, you know, roughly where that would be. But so technically they could have shadowed the whole property on there, but it would have obscured the, the driveway and the utility easement. So lot four is the balance of the land off of these um, acre and a half. And I think the shadowed area is just the buildable area because the high water mark comes in so far, I don't think any of the other stuff's buildable. So I think that shadow is the actual spot you can build a house. Okay. <clears throat> any other questions from the board? Seeing none, I'll now open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing and hearing none, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Mr. Chairman, I would want to make sure that these revision plans are in the findings of facts as we adopt it. It's going to be adopted as presented this evening and not as published. Correct. There is no findings, findings of facts. facts this evening. It would be recorded in the minutes. Okay. Recorded in the minutes. I just want to make sure. And these, we... these, he would be able to plot these lots as he sells them. Okay. He would not be required to, as we've done previously on developments around the lake. They are platted as they sell, sell the lot, so. Unless that's his desire to plat them all at one time, but he would be allowed to plat them as he sells them. So. Right. I just want to make sure that people understand that it was published that because it meets our requirements. What was published didn't quite meet our requirements. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. This is the republication? Yeah, because they just got that right. all stuff hammered out. Right. Right. Unless you would want to delay till the uh, September meeting and then approve this at that time. You could do that also. I don't see any reason to do that. It's, it's because he's brought it into compliance and it's presented here. We, we accept this presentation is what we're approving. Yep. Just so everybody knows that, not what was published. Okay. And there is no findings of the facts. Well, Richard, would you call the vote? Bartley. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Kleinjohn. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yeah. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Agenda item 2021, plat 010, 
Plat of Block 2, Goodfellow Acres Edition, and Parcel 4 of the Plat of Government Lot 1 and in Government Lot 6, and in the west half of the northeast one-fourth of the west half of the east half of the northeast quarter, all in Section 31, Township 112 North, Range 51W of the 5th Primary in Brookings County. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Diedrich. Second by Troyan. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2021 Plat 010, the Stephen Goodfellow Plus Trust is platting off 135.8 acres of pasture and grassland and trees. Uh, the property is irregular shape and it's on the west side, and it's the only way you could describe it for a legal description was to plat the property. A residence could be built on this parcel as, as it exceeds the 35 acre size requirements, and the southwest portion of the parcel that borders Mortimer Slough is zoned natural resources with a 300 foot setback and the balance of the land is, is zoned agriculture. And the plat meets the comprehensive plan requirements of the 2016 comprehensive plan for ag use. This is a proposed plat. And this, I'll have another map, but this area right along here would be the, the area that is zoned natural resources. Here's the beacon map with the red outline of the proposed area. This area right in here, this is the area that would be zoned natural resources of it. Borders Mortimer Slough there. This property right in here is all fish and wildlife land, so that is already zoned natural resources. So this would be the property right here. They could build a house any place out here, but they would have to stay 300 feet away from this area right here if they were so choose to uh, build a house there. And the applicant is not here this evening, so that's all that I have. Thank you. Since the applicant is not here, uh, I'll anybody on the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing and hearing none. Is there anybody in the audience on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I'll now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? There's no findings of facts. There is no findings. Did you call vote? Gatsky. Yes. Dietrich. Yes. Fine John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yes. Erickson. Bartley. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passed. Agenda item 2021, Platt 011. Platt of Block 3, Goodfellow Acres Edition, and Parcel 4 of the Platt of Government Lot 1, except the West 967.27 feet thereof and government lots 2 and 3 except for the West 967.27 feet thereof and government lot 6 all in the Northwest 1 fourth of Section 31 Township 112 North Range 51W of the 5th Primary in Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion? Something moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Gatsky. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2021 Plat 011. Uh, the Stephen Goodfellow Trust is platting off 38 acres of grassland, pasture, and trees. Uh, the property is irregularly shaped on the west and east side, and it can only be described with a plat with a legal description. A residence could be built on this parcel as, as it exceeds the 35 acre requirement. And here again, also in the southeast portion, um, it is zoned natural resources with a 300 foot setback. It does meet the platting requirements of the 2016 comprehensive plan for the agricultural use area. This is the block three, the 38 acres, regularly shaped here, and this would be the natural resources area along this area. This is the red. 
outlined area shows us the plat on the beacon map. Right here, this is the existing building site that was deeded off, platted off a couple years ago. Here's the beacon map showing the natural resources area right in this area. Just the beacon map with the balance of the land there, and that's all that I have. Thank you. The uh, applicant is not here. Correct. And I'll open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience on the phone that is for this? Seeing and hearing none, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I'll now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you call a vote? Erickson. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Klein John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yes. Bartley. Aye. Gatsky. Yes. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Agenda item 2021, Plat 012. Plat of Lot 1A of Kodiak Edition in the southeast one-fourth of Section 3, Township 109 North, Range 48W of the 5th Primary in Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Bartley. Would you read the staff report, please? Yes, Mr. Strohog, you can come up and take your place at the uh, board. Mr. Dietrich recused himself. This is 2021 Plat 012. Uh, Kodiak Pork is platting on the west sides of their property. They are enlarging the footprint to meet second setback requirements of future building additions. And the additional land purchase will make the west property line straight, which is now offset. They're adding a few feet uh, to the north also, which is there and it meets the comprehensive plan requirements for the agricultural use. This is a proposed plat. This is the west side is, is now straight. I'll show you in a couple seconds here how it was previously. You can kind of see um, it was a jog right here over and back again they've added this was the original line they've added a few feet to the north and a few feet to the west this is all straight on there they're doing some additions uh, onto their buildings not increasing any animal units just making the the buildings bigger for uh, creature comfort so this is the beacon map with the shaded areas the original plat the way it was platted the red outlined area is the new proposed plat, adding the few feet to uh, enlarge the plot and make this a straight line on the, the west side. This just shows the beacon map, how it is, the adjoining property around there. And that's all I have, and the applicant is not here this evening, I don't believe. The applicant is not here then. I will move to open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing and hearing none, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you call the vote? Gatsky. Yes. Storhog. Aye. Fine John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yes. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Mr. Starhog, you can now step down and Mr. Dietrich will a spot back on the we will now convene
The Board of Adjustment is a nine-member board which has the power to hear requests for variances, conditional uses, and appeals from non-ministerial decisions to the zoning officer. The concurring vote of two-thirds of the full board membership of the board, six votes is necessary for approval of a variance or an appeal to the zoning officer. The concurring vote of a simple majority of those board members present and voting is necessary for approval of a conditional use permit. In accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, require a motion, we require a motion to approve a request before a request can be debated. As a matter of policy, all motions are to be made in a positive. The board, under specific powers granted to it by the state, shall authorize variances from zoning requirements where special conditions existing on the land will result in unnecessary hardships for the applicant. Financial disadvantage to the property owner shall not constitute proof of an unnecessary hardship. Agenda item 2021 CU012, Hammock Dairy LLC by Wim Hammock has made an application 2021 CU012 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a conditional use Article 11, Section 11.01A, Agricultural District, Conditional Use Permit Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation. The property is described as the Southwest <coughs> One-Fourth to include the Southwest One-Fourth of the South one, Southwest One-Fourth and 100 feet of the Southeast One-Fourth of the Southwest One-Fourth in Section 22, Township 112 North, Range 50W, Eureka Township. Located at 46914 200 Street, Bruce, South Dakota, 57220. <coughs> Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Gadsky. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2021 CU012 Hammock Dairy LLC by Wim Hammock has applied for conditional use number 11 for class A, B, C, and D concentrated animal feeding operation, which is in our section 22, article 22, concentrated animal feeding operation to expand his class A dairy by adding 600 head of dry cows, which is 840 animal units and a barn to house them in on his current operation. The conditional use 2012 CU009 is for 3,000 head of mature cows, which is 4,200 animal units. It was approved by the County Board of Adjustment on July 12th, July 10th, 2012. And he is permitted by the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources for a Class A CAFO. And the engineering report is attached as a separate attachment for your review. He will meet the setback requirements and has adequate storage available in an existing nutrient sediment basins for the increase in the animal units. And he has a road agreement with Eureka Township on file and has spoken with them on the proposed expansion. The location of the proposed building is not located in Zone A of the Wellhead Protection Area or Zone B, which is the remainder of the map, shallow, shallow not included in Zone A according to the first occurrence of aquifer materials map in Brookings County. The application includes information required in Article 22, Section 22.01, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation Control Requirements Number 9, and information required for um, also for C and D operations. It has the owner's name and address and phone number, the legal description, the number of types and animals, nutrient management plan, manure management and operation, F, management control for flying odors, <coughs> G, the information for the ability for design setback requirements, including plan to scale, review of plans and specifications for the nutrient management plan by South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources for lagoons and storage basins, information on the soils, shallow aquifers, designated wellhead protection areas on the 100-year floodplain designation, and notification, whoever maintains access which is to the road, which is township, county, or state, and notification of public water officials. And any other information as contained in the application requested by the county zoning officer. The zoning office has reviewed the above documents, has made a site visit to the proposed location. Public notices were published in the Brookings Register on July 20th and 27th, 2021, and in the Volga Tribune on July 22nd and 29th, 2021. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, Eureka Township Chairman and Clerk, and the Brookings Dual Royal Water. 
Here is the applicant's conditional use application. This is a site plan. So in the proposed, this is the existing facility. This is the proposed barn just to the south of this freestall barn, meeting the setback requirements from the road and from the adjoining property lines. Just the beacon map showing the area view of the dairy. This is where the proposed barn would be located. Just a PowerPoint presentation looking from 200th Street up the driveway towards the, the main dairy building. This is looking east of the driveway, clear view going that way. This is looking to the west from 200th Street, good visibility that way. This is up in the up in the yard, looking towards the, on the east side of the existing barn there, looking towards the east, which is currently a cornfield, uh, where the proposed uh, barn would be located. Uh, this is just looking at the intersection of 200th Street and 469th Avenue, looking back towards the east. And this is at that same intersection, looking towards the north, clear view that way. So, mowed and kept up appearance out in the country there. And that's all that I have. And the applicant then is engineer is here this evening. Thank you. Would the applicant step forward, state your name. William Hamming. Uh, Do you have anything to add to Richard's report? Well, um, 26 years ago, we moved here from the Netherlands and just about to the day, August zoning meeting and we got our first approval to build a dairy here and ever since we've been happy to move that we moved to to Brookings so we've been here several times and this time I guess we we just like to add a dry cow barn to make to make our dairy more um, late it's laid out better with a dry cow barn to separate them off than have them in the milking barn any other questions from board Thank you. At this time, I'll open the public portion of the hearing. Is anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing and hearing none. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Well, I'm assuming this will get addressed at probably the state permit process, but I would assume that the lagoon is big enough to support. Are you guys doing any other lagoon modifications to support no, the extra the, 600? No, the lagoon is uh, big enough to handle what we we're adding. And then the manure is scraped to a pit. Engineers here too, if you've got questions for the engineer. But it's scraped into a pit, and then it's going to be pumped to our normal or to existing uh, uh, manure uh, pit and separators that we have. I don't think that got mentioned, but we're also looking at, uh, <clears throat> at adding a digester. I understand there's no special permit needed for that, but Ben Stout is here. If somebody has questions about what's gonna go on with the digester, uh, we can answer questions there too, I guess. So. I noticed that on your plans. Any timeline on that? or On the digester? Yeah. Uh, Probably construction next year, maybe in use in uh, 23. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. The digester is not a part of this conditional use application. That's a part of the management, the nutrient management plan. So we have that is not included in any discussion or the expansion of the dairy this evening. The digester is not. That is a management um, position on there that would be regulated by DNR. Just that when and if it does come through, if there was a pipeline company, that would have to be come through this the zoning board for the pipeline permit to be granted. But as far as the digester being on his plan this evening, that is not a requirement to be on there. He has adequate storage on there um, via the engineer's report. And also um, the nutrient management plan kind of lags behind. We had a neighbor contact us um, today. Um, his fields had been removed and he's using them as his self. 
Mr. Hammock has added four more fields in replacement of that. And just in the time lag with DNR and everything, he still has adequate acres with the expansion for his nutrient management plan. So just kind of a lag time deal with the, um, his crop consultant and, and DNR, so, or a and R, excuse me. Is there any other comments or questions for members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? All right, I'll read this first one in its entirety and the rest of them this evening. I'll read the main page and highlight the rest of the areas, so bear with me here. Uh, Brickings County Zoning Conditional Use Permit 2021-CU012 an application for a condition in the use having been filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission acting as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Hammock Deary LLC by Wim Hammock regarding the following real property. The southwest one-fourth to include the southwest one-fourth of the southwest one-fourth and the west 100 feet of the southeast one-fourth of the southwest one-fourth in section 20 50 West Eureka Township. Located at, located at 46914 200 Street, Bruce, South Dakota, 57220. After due notice of public hearing having been held on the application on this third day of August 2021, number one, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment here, hereby finding that it is empowered to grant such conditional use under the following sections of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Article 11, Section 11.01A, Agricultural District, Conditional Use Number 11. Class A, B, C, and D, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation, and further finding that the granting of the conditional use will not adversely affect the public interest. Number two, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds and certifies that the following specific rules governing the conditional use request have been complied with. Article 22, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation, Section 22.01, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations, Control Requirements, Number 8. The Board of Adjustment has considered and incorporates these findings. Number seven, standards for conditional use found on page 22-17, 18 and 19 of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Number three, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds that satisfactory provisions and arrangements have remained considering the following were applicable. A, entrance and exits to the property and proposed structures thereon with particular reference to automotive and pedestrian safety and convenience traffic flow and control and access in case of fire or catastrophe. The main entrance is off 200 Street and a secondary entrance and exit for agricultural machinery may use 469th Avenue. B, off street parking and loading areas were required with particular attention to items in A above and economic noise, glare or other effects of the conditional use on adjoining properties and properties generally in the district. No on street parking. C. Utilities, refuge, and service areas with reference to locations, availability, and compatibility. Dumpster service for garbage disposal. D, screening and buffering with reference to type, dimensions, and character. Maintain existing shelter belts. E, signs of any and proposed exterior lighting with reference to glare, traffic safety, economic effect, and compatibility in harmony with other properties in the district. 32 square foot sign allowed and any required safety signs for livestock operation and production. F, required yards and other spaces, none stated. G, general compatibility with adjacent properties and other properties in the district. Comprehensive plan requirement met for the agricultural district. H, roads providing access to the property are adequate to meet the transportation demands of the proposed conditional use, the Board of Adjustment may require the applicant to enter into a written contract with any affected township or other governmental unit regarding the upgrading or continued maintenance of any roads used for the conditional use purpose requested prior to the issue of this conditional use. Road agreement with Eureka Township is on file. We have existing one on file already. Any required notification to law enforcement or fire department? None stated. J, any safety inspections required? Any inspections required by the South Dakota oh, Department of Agriculture? And natural resources for state CAFO permit. Number four, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment 
further determines and conditions this conditional use permit upon the following additional special conditions or safeguards. Well, that was, there's no monitoring wells on there. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment by at least two thirds vote if it's a full membership. Hereby grants the above petitioner a conditional use for the above described property as follows. Conditional use permit 11A, 11, Class A dairy, concentrated animal feeding operation, expansion of his Class A dairy by adding 600 head of mature dairy cattle, which is 840 animal units, for a total of 3,600 mature cows, which is 5,040 animal units. This conditional use is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the requirements and conditions in three and four above and compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. The Brookings County Zoning Officer, if approved, is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the requirements of this conditional use. This conditional use is not signed within three years of the date granted. It shall be invalid. Dated this third day of August, 2021. Just thought of something here under this one. State CAFO permit required expansion. Mr. Chairman, I concur with the findings of the facts. Thank you, Mr. Diedrich. That being said, Richard, would you call the vote? Dietrich. Aye. Klein John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yes. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, agenda item 2021 CU 013. Ryan and Stacy Ness have made an application 2021 CU 0 adjustment for conditional use, Article 4, District Requirements, Chapter 4.03, LP Lake Park District, Section 4.03.02, Conditional Use Permit Number 3, Resorts. The property is described as Lot 1A and 2A of Goodfellow Edition in the north half of the northeast one-fourth of Section 18, Township 111, North Range 51W, Oakwood Township, located at 46075 204th Street, Bruce, South Dakota, 57220. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Troyan. Richard, would you please read the staff report? Yes, 2021 CU 013, Ryan and Stacy Ness have applied for the Lake Park Conditional Use Number 3 for a resort. The location is the Owl Lodge that was operated by Vance Goodfellow, and the Nesses have purchased the property and would like to reopen the Owl Lodge. The property is located in the Lake Park Zoning District, and it is not located in the floodplain or Zone B of the Occupier Materials Map. And they are proposing to host weddings, receptions, family gatherings, business meeting, craft retreats, and the property is, consists of five acres that has a lodge, a house, and three other outbuildings. And they have a lease on the remaining adjoining 35 acres that also has the outpost located on it, which is another outbuilding that they could use for uh, part of their event center and the resort. Um, the business plan shows they operate the lodge for the event center and the lodge and the outpost as a bread and bed and breakfast facility, allowing for up to 30 overnight guests in the 
Owl Lodge and the Outpost will have lodging capabilities for another 10 people. The lodge has a full kitchen, three and a half bath, a full bathroom and four showers. Um, they will need to apply for bread and breakfast or lodging license from the South Dakota Department of Health on there. And a copy will need to be filed with the develop, County Development Office. They will not be preparing food on site. The food will be catered in by the renters of the lodge. No alcohol will be served and they will not have a liquor license. They will need to follow the local ordinance and state laws for alcohol um, consumption, serving, and that type of thing. Maximum capacity would be you're looking at 300 guests for the lodge and the outpost with available parking for uh, up to 400. They have parking available for 400 guests. Um, the events will end at 1 a.m. Severe weather security and the fire plan was included in their plan and they also are applying for conditional use 2021 CU 014 for a campground uh, this, this evening also that may be used in, a, in conjunction with the lodging events and or regular camping when no events are planned at the lodge. The zoning office has reviewed the documents and made a site plan of the proposed location and public notices were published in the Brookings Register on July 20th and 27th, 2021 and the Volume Tribune on July 22nd and 29th, 2021. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners and the Brookings County Highway Department and the Oakwood Township Chairman and Clerk. This is their conditional use application. The site plan, main entrance coming in here, parking area there, um, parking area and, and area in front of the lodge. Uh, this is on the next application which shows where the camping sites would be located, uh, grass area for parking here, uh, road coming down to the outpost located over here on the other parcel, uh, some other outbuildings in their house located there. So they have lots of parking and um, available safe space for um, events inside the lodge or if they want events outside if the renter so chooses for tents or whatever so this is just a little more of the showing the parking spots they have 126 parking areas in the grassy area there um, onto the west side of the, the parking lot the grassy area off to the west so they have adequate parking this is their business plan um, that was attached here. Five acres. Um, this is, would be the main entrance for the lodge. Um, this would be the parking area right here. More parking there and back down in this area. Uh, this parcel here, the 35 acres, this is where the outpost is located. So I'll show that on this, this map here. Um, so this would be also what they could use for um, events, reunions, sleeping quarters for um, tenants or renters of the, of the facility or um, of that. This is just some pictures off of 204th Street from the driveway looking to the east, clear vision going to the east, the main driveway going into the yard, uh, the lodge straight ahead there, uh, looking off to the west from the driveway on 204th. This is a grassy parking area. Looking from the road there, this is just looking back up towards the lake, towards the highway from the edge of the gravel off of this parking spot right here. This is the west parking area. This is the area on the west side of the trees right here. For more parking, uh, this is the east side of the building, just showing a large open area for gatherings or whatnot if you want to be outside. This is the south end of the, looking towards the north. Um, the storage shed right here, I believe that is, just showing the more open area there with shade and picnic tables there. This is looking back towards the north. This is the south end of the Owl Lodge. Um, exit door from the second story there. Another exit door here. There's two more doors over there also for um, exit doors there. Just looking at the southwest corner, looking up towards the road. This is the parking area, great area, whatever they want to call it if they need parking down in that area. Just looking from the driveway down towards the southwest towards the outpost going down in there. This is the west. This is the outpost here. Looking at it from uh, the front of the outpost area south of there. This is the inside of the lodge looking towards the east side. Big open area. 
balcony coming up here, wraps around to the bathroom here, um, goes around to the back storage area right there as far as that goes, could get around um, to the west side. This is the main floor, uh, big garage door that could be open up, bathrooms right here above the balcony mezzanine area. Uh, this is the, this bathroom is located right above this door right here on the second floor. This is the west side of the the owl going up the step towards the sleeping area. Um, this is looking, this is the north side of the steps right here going down the, the hallway to the four sleeping rooms there. This is just a storage area. This is the main uh, master bath up on the second floor. It's just a hallway going down for access to the sleeping rooms along here. Um, the four sleeping rooms, three sleeping rooms are pretty much identical to this. The master room going with the master bath here is a little more fancier, more set up for um, a couple people. This is a kitchen area which is on the main floor on the west side of the big uh, owl uh, gathering center there. Uh, full kitchen that's just looking back towards going out into the owl there that uh, renters could present and fix food if they wanted. Like I said, they will not be preparing food on site. Um, at this time, if they do, they would need to get a license from the South Dakota Department of Health for that. There's one of the main bathrooms on the north end of the kitchen here. This is a great room on the west side of the kitchen for uh, more events and gatherings. Uh, this is uh, the game room, which would be um, on the end of this room going off to the west, uh, partially used for storage, but pool tables, foosball tables in there, you know, for lots of games for kids if you want that, they have. This is just the main um, events area looking back um, from the southeast corner towards the, um, the front of it. This is all a gathering area, garage door open up if they need to. Um, the weather is nice. Just looking back again of the events there. This is the outpost. You'll walk in the front door. This is the first thing you see looking off to the, to the right island area here. A big kitchen, um, dining room. This is the kitchen back here, a dining room area. This is a big great room off to the east of this dining room with some additional sleeping quarters in there. Uh, this is looking back from that great room back towards the west, towards the dining room and another open area on that side. This is the northwest corner of that island area. Um, more couches and lounging area there. Uh, main floor on the bathroom there just off the kitchen. Uh, this is the second floor loft area, uh, bathroom there main bedroom right here off of this loft area. So and the applicants are here this evening. So um, that's, that's all that I have. Thank you, Richard, for the applicant. Please step forward. Uh, take a seat and clear the state your name. My name is Stacy Ness. I'm right, Ness. You have anything to add to Richard's report? <laughs> um, the only thing that I would say is he on there he put no alcohol would be served um, we will not serve the alcohol the people like if they're having a wedding they can bring in their own alcohol but they cannot sell it um, so that'd be the only change that I would make to clarify that a little bit any other questions or comments from members of the board Seeing none at this time, uh, I'll now move on and open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience around the phone that is for this? The development office did receive a phone call from uh, Morth Williamson, from the Joint um, Revocable Trust, calling to inquire about the requirements and, and the request that they had made. And they are the adjoining landowner to the east of this property, and they have no issues with the campground or the resort request. So. Okay. Is there anybody else in the audience or on the phone to support us? Come on up, Speed. Have yeah, you guys just step back, step back for a second? I, my name is Dennis DeBoer, and I had a question about the big door. When Vance Goodfellow had applied for an application, the board had said that the door had to be closed at a certain time. During events, is 
Any record of that yet? We have that addressed in the findings of facts. We'll address that later on after all the public hearing is done, Dennis. Is there anybody else in the audience that is for this? Seeing hearing none, is there anybody else in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? Yes, I'll read the first page and we'll do the highlighted area. County Zoning Conditional Use Permit 2021 CU013, application for conditional use permit, have them filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission, acting as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment, copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Ryan and Stacy Ness regarding the following real property. Lot 1A and 2A of Goodfellow Edition in the north half of the northeast one-fourth of Section 18, Township 111 North, Range 51 West, Oakwood Township. After due notice of public hearing, have been held on the application on this third day of August, 2021. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment hereby finding that it is empowered to grant such conditional use under the following sections of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Article 4, Re District Requirements, Chapter 4.03, LP, Lake Park District, Section 4.0302, Conditional Use Permit, Number 3, Resorts further finding that the granting of the conditional use will not adversely affect the public interest. Number two, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds and certifies that the following specific rules governing the conditional use have been complied with. None stated. Number three, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds that satisfactory provisions and arrangements have been made concerning the following no applicable. A, entrance and exits. We'll use existing driveway off 204th Street, which is also known as Brookings County Blacktop Road number six and maintain a 24-foot fire lane for emergency vehicles. B, off-street parking. No on-street parking or parking in the ditch right-of-way of 204th Street, otherwise known as Brookings County Blacktop Road Number 6. C, utilities and refuge. Must use dumpster service. D, screening and buffering. None stated. E, signs. 32 square foot allowed with only one side allowed for conditional use. CU-013, which is the, the Owl Lodge, conditional use if approved. CU-014, which would be the campground. You must also install a stop sign at the end of the driveway before exiting the property. F, required yards and other open spaces. Maintain open areas as shown on the site plan. G, general compatibility with adjacent properties and other properties in the district. Comprehensive plan requirements met for the Lake Park District. H, roads. The resort is located on 204th Street, which is also known as Black Op, Workings County Blacktop Road Number 6. I, notification of the law enforcement or fire department. Number one, events with 250 or more in attendance notify the Brookings County Sheriff's Office 24 hours in advance of the event being held. J, Safety inspections. Any required safety inspections for fire code safety. Number two, inspections by the South Dakota Department of Health for lodging requirements. Number four, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines the condition is conditional use upon the following additional special conditions or safeguards. A, South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources approved design and capacity for the septic system, which that has already been met, but we keep that consistent with our um, conditional use event center applications. South Dakota Department of Health inspection and license required if food would be prepared on site. C, food may be catered in by renters of the facility. D, adequate number of restroom facilities and trash receptacles for the people attending events being held inside the owl or outside. E, South Dakota Department of License Department of Health license and any required inspections for lodging of overnight guests at the Owl Lodge and the Outpost. Maximum number of 30 overnight guests in the Owl Lodge, and maximum number of 10 overnight guests in the Outpost. Copy of the lodging license to be on file in the Brookings County Development Office. F. Any sale, serving, or consumption of alcoholic beverage must be in compliance with all local ordinances and state laws. G. 
Host only social events as noted in the designated areas on the site plan. Any other use is prohibited without prior permits. H. Maximum attendance of 300 people. at one time per event. I, outside events with music or events inside the Owl Lodge with music with the garage door open, music must be turned down at 11 p.m. J, events to be concluded by 1 a.m. K, if the applicant sells property, the new owner will need to live on the site and apply for conditional use, continue the operation. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment, by at least two-thirds vote of its full membership, hereby grants the above petitioner conditional use permit for the following de above described property as follows. Conditional use number three for a resort to host events, but not limited to weddings, graduations, retreats, birthday parties, anniversaries, in areas noted on the site plan and within the facility and lodging for up to 40 overnight guests in the designated areas. The conditional use permit is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the requirements in 3 and 4 above and upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. If approved, the Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the requirements of this conditional use permit. If this conditional use permit is not used within three years of the date granted. It shall be invalid. Dated this third day of August, 2021. Is there any additions to the finding of facts? Chairman, I would concur with the findings of facts. Thank you, Mr. Bartley. Richard, would you call the vote? Dietrich. Aye. Kleinjohn. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Well, Mr. Starhog. Aye. Mr. Jensen recused himself on this one. Mr. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passed. Mr. Jensen will be recusing himself on this one also. Yes. Mr. Okay. Starhog, you can come up to the chair if you'd like. Agenda item 2021-CU-014. Ryan and Stacy Ness have made an application 2021-CU-014 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a conditional use Article 4 District Requirements, Chapter 4.03 LP Lake Park District, Section 4.03.02 Conditional Use Permit Number 2. Private Parks and Campgrounds. The property is described as Lot 2A of Goodfellow Edition in the north half of the northeast one-fourth of Section 18 Township 111 North, Range 51W, Oakwood Township, located at 46075 204th Street, Bruce, South Dakota, 57220. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Gatsky. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2021 CU-014, Ryan and Stacy Ness have applied for Lake Park additional use number two for a private park and campground. The campground is located at the Owl Lodge that was operated by Vance Goodfellow. The Nesses have purchased the property and like to reopen the campground at the Owl. The property is located in the Lake Park Loaning District and is not located under in the floodplain or zone B of the aquifer materials map. And they're proposing to open a campground for seven camping spots, and they're in the process of installing electricity to each campsite and considering installing water and sewer or a dumping station. All of these improvements will need to be met by the South Dakota Department of Health and the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources requirement, and campground could be used in conjunction with the Owl Lodge or separately when no events are planned. And they would need to apply for a campground license from the South Dakota Department of Health with a copy to be filed with the development office on file. And there are seven camping pads there. Um, one pad is 18 by 81. And the second pad is 15 by 74. 
Uh, the third pad is 16 by 48, and the remaining pads 4 through 7 are 18 by 81. A fire extinguisher will be placed outside, and the bathroom with showers are located within the Owl Lodge if they uh, needed. A quiet time would be from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., and campers would be notified of severe weather and use of an interior room of the Owl Lodge for a storm shelter. Uh, the campground would be open April 15th to October 15th yearly, and it would be for short-term camping, a maximum of one week, seven-day stay with no long-term camping. There would be no off-season storage of campers allowed other than the applicant's own uh, personal campers. Uh, the applicant um, did apply for the uh, conditional use for the resort this evening that you just approved, also the same night. The zoning office has reviewed the documents and made a visit to the site. And public notices were published in the Brookings Register on July 20th and 27th, 2021, in the Brookings Register and in the Volga Tribune on July 22nd and 29th, 2021. And letters were sent to the adjoining landowners of Brookings County Highway Department and the Oakwood Township Chairman and Clerk. <coughs> the applicant's conditional use application. Camp or the site plan coming in the main driveway, site one through seven. Parking area there, but this would be the main area where the campground would be in this area here. They do have an existing septic system right here that could be used um, possibly until they get um, uh, approved design from DNR and where their location might be. So just their business plan. Just showing the beacon map again, showing the area. PowerPoint, just quick, the main entrance here. This is the north end of the camping ground. This would be, I'm not sure if it's number one or seven, but this is the north end looking at the east from the north end of the parking lot, gravel parking pad area. This is just looking off to the south, southeast of the existing uh, pads between the trees there. And this is looking from the north um, back towards the, the camping spots from the Owl, the big, large camp turnaround area for parking to get in there up to back in here they cannot get on the east side of the trees there and this is just uh, the out the owners where the, the applicants live in that would be and so and that's all that I have would the applicant step forward and clearly state your name <clears throat> Stacy Ness Brian Ness do you have anything to add to Richard's staff report? Any questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, I'll now open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the lady did call in before the same person, Myrna, with the Trust she had no apple, no inquired about it, had no issues or concerns with the campground on there, had no objections. So, Mirth with the Williamson Joint Revocable Trust, which is the adjoining landowner to the east of the property. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing hearing none, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? Yes, Brookings County, Brookings County Zoning Conditional Use Permit 2021 CU014 application for a conditional use permit having been filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission acting as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment. A copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Ryan and Stacy Ness regarding the following real property. Lot 2A of Goodfellow Edition in the north half of the northeast one-fourth of Section 18, Township 111 North, Range 51 West, Oakwood Township. 
located at 46075 204th Street, Bruce, South Dakota. After due notice, a public hearing have been held on the application on this third day of August, 2021. Number one, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment hereby findings and that it is empowered to grant such a conditional use permit on the following sections of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Brookings County Zoning Ordinance, Article 4, District Requirements, Chapter 4.03, LP, Lake Park District, Section 4.0302, Conditional Use Number 2, Private Parks and Campgrounds. Further finding that the granting of the conditional use will not adversely affect the public interest. Number two, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds and certifies that the following specific rules governing the conditional use required are been compli complied with. Site plan submitted with the conditional use application. Number three, Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds that satisfactory provisions and arrangements have been made concerning the following real property. A, entrance and exit. Entrance and exit will use the existing driveway off 204th Street and maintain a 24-foot fire lane for in case of the emergency for access in case of emergency. B. Off-street parking. No on-street parking allowed. Use on-site parking. No parking in Brookings County Blacktop Road, number six right away, which is the ditch. C. Utilities and refuge must use a trash service. D. Screening and buffering, none stated. Signs. 32, squit, 32 square foot sign allowed and only one sign for conditional use 013, which is the Owl Lodge, the resort, in 2021, CU 014, which is the campground. Install a stop sign at the end of the driveway. Required yards and other open spaces, none stated. G, general compatibility with adjacent property. The comprehensive plan requirements met for the Lake Park District. H, roads with access to the property. Private campground is located on 204th Street, which is otherwise known as Brookings County Blacktop County Road Number 6. I, any requirements of law enforcement and the fire department? None stated. J, any required safety restrictions? Any required inspections by the State of South Dakota Department of Health for the private campground? Number four, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and conditions this conditional use upon the following additional special conditions or safeguards. Number one, South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources approved design and capacity for, specific, for the septic system to be used as a designated dumping station or individual camping spots. Number two, the maximum number of camping spots is seven with a maximum stay of seven consecutive days per camper. Number four, copy of the campground license from the South Dakota Department of Health to be on file in the County Development Office. Number five, fire extinguishers to be located outside on site. Uh, pest and rodent control. Number seven, camping spots as noted in the designated areas on the site plan. Other uses prohibited without proper permits. Number eight, quiet time was from 10 p.m. to 8 p.m., 8 a.m. Number nine, no off-season storage of campers, are, of campers or RVs allowed. Only applicants' personal campers are allowed for year-round storage. Number 10, season campground open seasonally from April 15th to October 15th. And number 11, if the applicant sells a property, the new owner would need to live on the site and apply for a conditional use application to continue the operation if they so desire. Brookings County Board of Adjustment by majority vote if its members hereby grants the above petitioner conditional use permit for the above described real property as follows. Number two, private campground with camper sites as noted on the site plan. This conditional use is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the requirements and conditions in three and four above and upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. If, Brookings, if approved, the Brookings Zoning Zoning director is authorized to issue any required building permits 
for construction consistent with the requirements of this conditional use. If this conditional use permit is not used within three years of the date granted, it shall be invalid. Dated this third day of August, 2021. Any additions to the findings of facts? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, Richard, you said that it was 10 o'clock quiet time, but on the previous one, we granted 11 o'clock for the music to turn down, so I didn't know if that's... This is what they had on, on as far as their quiet time goes. If you wanted to, you can okay. go with that. But the quiet time was 11, 11 a.m. They had to turn the music down. Right. Okay. 11 p.m., yes. Yeah. For events at the... All know. right. I just didn't know. I just thought... I oh, just want to clarify. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I concur with your finding of fact. Then. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gatsky. And if they want to change it to 10 o'clock to turn the music down for the events over there, that's there. But if we get... Complaints after that, after 11, then we'd, we could take, you know, requirements to make them do that. But With that, then, we'll call for a vote. Vanderwall. Aye. Storhog. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Klein John. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Agenda item 2021 CU 015 Dakota Layers LLC by Jason Ramsdale has made an application 2021 CU 015 to the Brookings County. Board of Adjustment for a Conditional Use, Article 11, Section 11.01A, Agricultural District, Conditional Use Permit Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation. The property is described as the Northeast 1 4th in Section 10, Township 109 North, Range 48W, Parnell Township. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Gatsky. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yeah, one second. All right, here we go. Whoops. All right. 2021 CU-015, um, Dakota Layers LLC by Jason Ramsdell has applied for conditional use permit number 11 for a concentrated animal feeding operation, CAFO, for a Class B CAFO for 1,080 head, head of 1,800 animal units of laying hens. The proposed facility will be located on 482nd Avenue, which is also uh, Brookings County Gravel Road number 27. We'll have a main building with four enclosed barns extending out from the main building with open areas on each side for the chickens to run outside on free range. The main building runs, the main building barns and runs are shown on the site plan, but the event, and they have received an updated site, and we do have the dimensions also here now on here. The free range open areas will be fenced off and covered. There will be vegetation growing on the open lots for the chickens to feed on an area and graze to uh, lay their eggs. When the chickens cannot be outside, they'll be housed inside building. In the building runs, well, they'll be free to roam. The eggs will be collected daily from either locations where the chickens are located. And there is a proposed stormwater pond located to the southwest of the open lots to contain any runoff from the open lots. The proposed stormwater pond will be built to South Dakota Department of Agricultural Natural Resources specifications. And the manure litter from each of the inside runs will be collected and stored on the inside of the, in the designated storage areas on the end of each unit. Uh, the storage units would have 365 days of storage, and the manure litter would be hauled out and sold as commercial fertilizer to area farmers by Ramsell's F&M LTD, who will then spread it on the fields. This is an approved practice for the nutrient management plan by the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources. They will process the manure litter at the other facility. They process the manure litter at their other facility in Moody County like this, and this would be handled in the same way. 
spectrum of agricultural natural resources requirements. The proposed facility will meet the setback requirements of 1,760 feet from any wells or residents, 200 feet from property lines, and 300 feet from, from county roads. <clears throat> the proposed open lot exceeds the 50 foot requirement from the road, setback from the road, and the applicant has completed the concentrated animal feeding operation training uh, put on by the South Dakota Extension, South Dakota Department of Agricultural Natural Resources, and the NRCS, which is the Natural Resources Conservation Service training on June 27, 2018. When the applicant's complete application was um, included as attachments in this, and the proposed area of building is not located in the floodplain or zone A of the wellhead protection, or zone B, which is the wet remainder of the shallow aquifer map, uh, according to the first occurrence of aquifer materials in Brookings County. The application has the information required in Article 22, Section 22.01, for concentrated animal feeding operation control requirements, number nine. I had read this previously, and I will not um, repeat this again. All the items A through K uh, were in the application. The zoning office has reviewed the above documents and made a site to the proposed location. Uh, the public notices were published in the Brookings Register on July 20th and 27th, 2021, and the Elkin Record on July 22nd and 29th, 2021. And letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, the Parnell Township Chairman and Clerk, and the Brookings County Highway Department, and along with Brookings Dual Rural Water. This is the application, conditional use application. Their site plan. So I can come in at the roughly the section line and go to the north a little bit here. The setback areas, the main building, uh, with their four runs uh, coming off of those. This would be their open lot areas between the um, the barns and the runs. There, this is their proposed um, stormwater basin in there. That would be contain the water off the lots and or the buildings that would be there. This is just the Beacon map showing the bare quarter as it is right now, the proposed rough location roughly in that area. Just a PowerPoint with some pictures on here. Whoop. This is at the intersection of 482nd Avenue, which is also Brookings County Road number 27 and the intersection to the north, which is 215th Street, uh, looking south towards that, Clearview. This is looking on 215th Street, looking towards the west, Clearview that way. Um, this is right now the proposed cornfield in the middle of it. Um, hard to see the lay of the land and everything there, but uh, looks like a good crop of corn coming with the conditions that we're having. This is the section line at the quarter line here, looking towards the west. Um, this is just looking from that section line um, towards the north. Well, this is looking south, excuse me. And this, no, this is looking towards the north from the south property line, and this is looking towards the south um, from that south property line. Um, I do have the updated uh, site plans here. Shows the main building with the storage area here on the end. Main main building with the runs extending out there from each each one. A distance between a storage area on the end of the runs here. Distance of the barn, barn size. Laying area, open open yard area there. And the applicant and his representative are here this evening. So there was one. Um, I'll make a, just a comment on here on the um, applicant. They had a well located on their property, and actually there is no wells that is located on the on the customer's parcel. 
Um, like we get that information off the Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources, a well drilling log, and they mark that the sap of this well was drilled back in the 70s, early 70s, and they mark that as best they can in that area. But that well should have been located in the southwest quarter and not the northeast quarter. So um, there is no well located on this property. So, and it's still, even without off of there, it still meets the setbacks for residents and the well off of that property. So, and that's, that's all that I have. Thank you, Richard. Would the applicant please step forward, clear to state your name. Board members, uh, Ben Stout, A1 Development. Jason Ramsdale with Dakota Layers. I've got a short PowerPoint here. I'll get plugged in. We just have um, you slide the mics a little closer to you, so you're. Make sure the green. I've got a. That better. Yeah. I've got a short PowerPoint here. I'll get plugged in. Um, most of the information is what Richard just covered. Okay. But One there, here. there are a couple of things that I would like to um, emphasize. about the application. Uh, certainly we're uh, willing to answer any questions about the application, the information provided. Um, are, you, are you up there? Is that yep. yours? Okay, yep, just enlarge that. There you go. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, Jason, do you want to start with a little bit of overview of the project and uh, what you're looking to do with this specialty facility? Certainly. Um, <clears throat> again, Jason Ramsey with Dakota Layers, uh, where I, I manage our family egg laying operation of 1.4 million egg layers and manage our 400,000 pullet farm. Um, we are also looking to do a more specialty complex where we will be raising cage free and or organic or free ranged egg layers uh, on a scale of 180,000 hens in um, eight different flocks. Uh, so we're looking to um, add this to our facilities ability of another type of egg production. Uh, so Ben Stout with A1 Development, we're a, a company that we work with livestock uh, groups to get uh, facilities permitted, dairies, uh, swine units, poultry facilities. Um, we've been working with Jason for several months on this project, helping him with the, the site plans and, and permitting work on this. Um, again, just highlighting some of this information that Richard just covered. Um, Class B CAFO, 180,000 hens. Um, this is going to be designed that they can meet several different marketing categories depending on uh, what's hot in the market. Um, and then it, the construction will also be phased in too. And Jason, do you want to uh, maybe mention that as well? Certainly. Uh, uh, as far as the phases of the construction goes, um, there, as the site plan you saw, there was four main bird buildings. Each building is actually divided down the, hall, down the lengthwise in the center to provide two different flocks. Um, and then the large building in the center uh, which will be towards the end of the phase. We expect this to be a two to three year phase of, of adding buildings to get to the full 180,000 hens. Um, this main building we are going to use more of a, more for a, um, a destination type area. We want to do a lot of um, education with either SDSU or schools around the area where we can bring um, uh, high school or younger, or even college students there that are looking into animal science to see an operation of, of egg laying hens and all the different types in that same facility. So it, it's going to have an area where people can see access to the birds, people can lounge in there, and then also we'll have our daily duties that we're going on of taking care of the hens, removing the eggs, um, cooling them in the cooler, etc. cetera. Um, as Richard mentioned, uh, we provided you with an application packet. Um, in summary, we believe that our application meets all the required zoning um, regulations. Um, we intend to apply for the South Dakota DA on our general feedlot permit um, immediately after approval at the county level. Um, so that's part of the process as well. Um, manure management facility operation plans, those have all been submitted as part of the application. Uh, mortality management will be done in conjunction with the uh, required methods by the Animal Industry Board. And uh, we've also notified the public road and water officials and, and been working with them throughout the process of this project developing. Um, just a quick note on the utilities. Main traffic will use the County Gravel Road, as Richard mentioned, uh, 482nd Avenue. This is also the main haul road for several other 
uh, facilities and, and uh, um, farms along the, in the area. Uh, we have had regular communication with County Highway Superintendent Brian Gustad on this. Uh, we do intend to add an approach as part of this project. Uh, that application has been submitted and we've had um, some discussion with Brian on that and uh, um, anticipating approval on, on that approach. Uh, we've also communicated this, uh, about this project with Parnell Township um, and haven't had any issues there. Uh, we don't intend to use Township roads at all. Um, the facility traffic will be using a county road with this project. Um, as far as water goes, per Brookings Dual Road Water Manager Gene Wiltz, uh, they have adequate water uh, close by the site, so that's an option. Um, certainly we could investigate groundwater too, but uh, uh, we do know that rural water is in the area and could serve the facility. Uh, and power needs to, um, there are a couple other facilities in the area, and this is right on the borderline of a couple different power providers. However, uh, both have adequate power to provide um, this facility with what we need, especially since the construction will be occurring in, in a couple different phases. Uh, so the, as mentioned, the nutrients from this facility will be uh, sold as commercial fertilizer. Um, this is through the DANR uh, fertilizer licensing program. Uh, South Dakota Codify Law 38-19. Um, this is the same process that the other Dakota Layers facilities use. Um, this facility will have 365 days of storage for manure, um, so that'll be hauled out, uh, you know, in the fall when, when uh, typical application occurs. Uh, one thing to note that maybe uh, questions from board members, certainly we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. We have had quite a bit of communication with DANR about this, and you know, really there aren't a ton of these facilities around that have both indoor and outdoor lots. Um, and the way that DANR um, officials have explained it to us is we don't anticipate to have the need to store or collect any liquid manure or runoff with this. Um, and part of the reason for that, and, and Jason, feel free to chip in too, um, the specialty marketing programs that we're looking at utilizing, they actually require your outdoor lots to either be vegetated or covered with straw or a similar um, type of material. Um, obviously, if you're using straw or mulch, you need to clean that out uh, regularly, and that would be, should that be what we use, that'll be stored in the indoor manure storage buildings with the rest of the litter. Um, but as part of these specialty programs, you actually have to submit a range management plan and you have to um, use rotational grazing practices. So we actually, we expect the outside areas to be vegetated and, and as a result, um, DANR doesn't expect that we'll need to collect any runoff. Um, however, if they do decide that we need to do that, uh, we'll put the runoff ponds in, in uh, the area that's proposed on the site plan. And uh, these, these are just a couple of snapshots from um, the requirements for the uh, specialty programs, it's a little bit tougher to read on the screen, but basically what it says is in outdoor lots, um, there are certain requirements, certain design requirements that basically the ground has to be covered with either, either vegetation or straw or a similar type of material. Um, yeah, and then uh, as mentioned, a range management plan must be developed, implemented, and updated annually. Um, this is to include range rotation, how to prevent um, basically muddy areas, and how to minimize buildup of diseases, parasites, and other material. Uh, this is the commercial fertilizer license, uh, one of the fertilizer licenses that's used at the other Dakota Layers facilities and uh, just followed up with a couple of the renderings of the facility um, that were also included in the application packet. Uh, this is all the same material that you were provided. Uh, barn dimensions roughly 520 feet by 60 feet wide uh, with about 350 feet in between for pasture space. And then those images overlaid on the site plan. 
Uh, so the next steps in the process, uh, pending approval tonight, uh, we will begin the application for the DANR general permit. Uh, that includes all the final engineering plans, uh, soil borings, um, and uh, you know, just to follow up again, per that permit, DANR doesn't allow any manure to leave the facility via runoff. Um, so, you know, should we need to capture any liquid, um, that'll be in the proposed containment area. However, as mentioned, we don't expect that to be um, something that's required. Um, we would like to begin construction this fall, so um, um, we intend to move forward with the process right away. Um, with that, uh, that's just a quick summary of the application packet. We would be happy to answer any questions that you have um, about the project. And thank you for your consideration. Any questions from members of the board? Luke, are you there? Do you got anything to add to this? Uh, sure, and thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Luke Muller with First District Association of Local Governments, and I just uh, I think that uh, Mr. Ramsdell and his his representative, uh, Mr. Stout, have have covered and made the points that they've most they've met the requirements of the ordinance. There are a couple of unique characteristics that they noted there. Um, and I just think it's worth noting that they acknowledge that if there is a requirement for stormwater containment, that they've got a place for it and they'll meet that. And then also it's worth noting that something unique about this is that this becomes dry fertilizer uh, at the site. And really uh, the only question I have, and maybe they address it already, is that um, it's my understanding that at the end of each of those barns, is the um, where the dry where the manure winds up uh, drying and turning into dry fertilizer? Does it go somewhere from there on the site, or does it stay there until it's hauled off? That's my only question. So the the manure on this is Jason Ramsdell. The the manure on site um, is dried inside the barns with stir fans. Um, as well as the natural behavior of the birds in these cage-free environments where they scratch around and, um, dr and move it around themselves. There are then scraper bars underneath the, the system inside that pull it out to the back of the barn, as well as a couple belts that hold manure above ground and pull them to that back of that, that manure storage in the back of the barn. It is then elevated on an inclined conveyor in that manure storage barn and uh, stockpiled there where it is dry fertilizer. Thank you. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Luke. Any other questions from members of the board? Seeing none, I'll now open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Mr. Chair, we did receive a couple comments, but that'll be on the uh, pro opponent side. Thank you. We did. We did have one on the pro opponents from Parnell Township. Excuse me. Um, Parnell Township Board stopped and reviewed the application, and they have no issues with the uh, request. Alrighty. Anybody else that is for this? Seeing and hearing none. Is there anybody in the audience around the phone that is opposed to this? Would you guys step back? Let's go. Step forward. Clearly state your name. You have my five minutes. John, my name is John Coughlin. I live in farm and own land in section ten. Of you slide Island. slide a little closer, Mr. Coughlin, or bring the mic towards you, please. Thank you. Is this better? Is this okay now? Yes, it's okay now. I live in farm and own land in Section 10 of Parnell Township, which is next to the northeast one-fourth of Section 10. I am speaking to object to the proposed project on the northeast one-fourth of Section 10. This project is totally unnecessary and nothing more than a public nuisance. It's about a few people making money on the backs of others. Brookings County and Parnell Township will get along just fine without it. This project would make three CAFOs in two linear miles. 
Can you slide just a little bit closer? A little bit closer, Slide yeah. the mic. There you go. Thank you. This would make two, excuse me, three CAFOs in two miles. One is a dairy in the southeast, one-fourth of Section 15. And there's a hog confinement in the southeast of Section 3. And this would be in Section 10 at a distance of approximately one-fourth mile away from the hog unit. That's all it is. There's three and two miles. That's too much. We don't want Brookings County to be like that. It's their right, right in line, right in a, virtually in line, right in a row. Now, I know this is zoned ag, the area is zoned ag, but if this is an ag project, then what are we doing here? What are we having this discussion about? This is something that's not normal for the area. That's why we're here. It's something that's not normal. I can go out and spray a field, spread fertilizer, I can till the ground, I can plant, harvest, and I don't have to come up here to get a permit to do it. So this is something different. And that's why it's, it infringes on people's rights. If you have to have a permit to, or permission from a landowner to move in a, just to replace a house, and yet they can come in and do this without any approval at all from the neighbors or anybody else. Now, whoever owns the northeast of 14, who, northeast one-fourth of section 10, whoever it is, they've got rights on that property and they end at the fence line. And that's where mine start. I've got rights on my property. And I shouldn't have to be subject to some kind of a chicken manure smell coming out over on my property when I'm doing what I want to do or need to do or whatever. And that's what this is about. And I know one person in particular this is going to make an awful darn hard on. I mean, it doesn't need to be that way. She's lived there a long time. We've been farming there a long, long time. And we were there first. And we've got our rights there. You have one minute remaining. Pardon? You have one minute remaining. And she shouldn't have to be subjected to that kind of treatment because she never did it to anybody else. This project is totally unnecessary and nothing more than a public nuisance. It's obnoxious and it's all about a few people trying to make some money at the expense of others. It's just about money and abusing people who happen to be just in the way. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Yes, Mr. Chair, we did receive a letter from Julia Coughlin. I'll read that here this evening. Um, Dear Sirs, I'm a lifelock resident and landowner in Parnell Township, Section 10. My land adjoins from a proposed site of the Dakota Layers CAFO. I'm writing in strong objection to the, condition, to the approval of the conditional use permit and to the construction of the project. I realize you've heard all the negative consequences in regard to odor and respiratory ailments that people who have to breathe the secondhand air from CAFOs have to endure, and that it is of little or no interest to, uh, to you, so I won't dwell on that. Let's talk about something you're very interested in, money. Do you know that your employees, illegals mostly in the U.S., are working, are going to cost someone for health and legal expenses? 
Just check how our county taxes have risen in the past few years. Read all the police recount, read all the police accounts of the past few years. How about the school expenses for the people who can't speak English? So we need special teachers for them and more equipment and insurance for teachers and children. How many of Jason's employees do we have to support for his benefit? Don't tell us you will buy our crops. I can't believe you intend to do that. We didn't see the CAFO who pays the income tax in South Dakota. Buying our crops are helping us to survive the low prices of 2018 and 19. You and Governor Nome say CAFOs are subject to inspections. For what, exactly? When you start raking in money for your CAFO, how many more CAFOs do Governor Nome and the commissioners have in mind for Brookings County? Additionally, do you know that we have an interest in the fact of the Oglala Aquifer on, is shrinking at an alarming rate? Please don't tell us that we have plenty of rural water from wells or the Big Sioux or the Sioux River. You are dimly aware, at least, of the drought here in Brookings County this year and back in the dirty 30s. It can and will happen again. China already made a grip on our food supply chain. They own Smithfield Plant in, Farm in Sioux Falls, formerly Morrell's, and are buying up farms in South Dakota and the U.S. It wouldn't be hard for them to buy one more big CAFO. Now for a solution to your desire to join the 1%. Take your access to investors and your attention to the big Central and South America and set up some CAFOs there, so people will not have to leave home to come here to work. I understand a lot of immigrants are unwilling to leave home and family to come here. In conclusion, I am strongly opposed to this CAFO and to any more in Brookings County. Sincerely, Julia Coffin. Is there anybody else opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional questions or comments from members of the board? Everybody good? Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? Brookings County Zoning Conditional Use Permit 2021 CU015, an application for a conditional use permit, having been acting as the Board of Adjustment, copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Dakota Layers LLC by Jason Ramsdell. Regarding the following real property, the Northeast 1 4th in Section 10, Township 109 North, Range 48 West, Parnell Township. After due notice, a public hearing having been held on the application on this third day of August 2021. Number one, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment hereby finding that it is empowered to grant such a conditional use from the following sections of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Article 11, Section 11.01A, Agricultural District, Conditional Use Permit Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation. And further finding that the granting of this conditional use will not adversely affect the public interest. Number two, Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds and certifies that the following specific rules governing the conditional use requested have been complied with. Article 22, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation, Section 22.01, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation Control Requirement Number 8. The Board of Adjustment has considered and incorporates these findings. Number 7, Standards for Conditional Use, found on pages 22-17, 18, and 19 of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Number three, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds that satisfactory provisions and arrangements have been made concerning the following or applicable. A, entrance and exits to the property. The main entrance is off 482nd Avenue, which also is known as uh, Brookings County Gravel Road number seven. Additional driveways will need driver permit from the Brookings County Highway Department. B, off street parking and loading areas. No on street parking, no loading or unloading of trucks on the road. C, utilities and refuge. Dumpster service for garbage disposal. D, screening and buffering. Work with the Brookings, Brookings Conservation District for a tree shelter belt plan for site around the perimeter of the site along the, and along the road as to not interfere with, the, interfere with the natural ventilation. E, signs of any. 32 square foot sign allowed and any required safety signs for livestock operation and production. 
F, required yards and other open spaces, other open spaces. Spraying of all noxious weeds and other weeds before they go to seed. Monitor weed growth and control by spraying, mowing, or tilling. By permit holder or designated professional sprayer service. Weed control is pursuant to South Dakota Code of Law 38-22. G, general compatibility. The comprehensive plan met for the agricultural district. Specific planning criteria for concentrated animal feeding operations were reviewed and applicable provisions for to ag processing facilities were reviewed to account, account for the conversion of manure, chicken litter, to commercial fertilizer per provisions of South Dakota Codified Law 38-19. H, roads providing service to the property. CAFO was located on, located on 482nd Avenue, which also is known as Brookings County Gravel Road Number 27. I, any required notifications to law enforcement or fire department. If any hazardous material spills occurs on the site, and also notify the Brookings County Emergency Management Office. J, any safety respect inspections. Any inspections required by the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources for state CAFO permit. Number four, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and to condition this conditional use upon the following additional sp special conditions or safeguards. A, state CAFO permit required from the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources. Copy to be on file with the County Development Office. B, letter from the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources stating Dakota Layers LLC facility located in the northeast one-fourth of Section 10, Township 109 North, Range 48 West, is licensed to engage in the distribution of chicken litter to be considered as a commercial fertilizer for provisions of South Dakota Codified Law 3819. This documentation will be considered as nutrient management plan for their facility only and does not apply to existing or future CAFO applications in Brookings County. No chicken litter to be stored outside. Must be stored inside until it can be hauled out. Surface runoff from buildings and outside open lots to be routed to a stormwater retention pond. E, stormwater retention pond to be built to South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources design standards. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment by at least majority vote of its full membership hereby grants the above petitioner a conditional use for the above described property as follows. Conditional use permit number 11, class B concentrated animal feeding operation for 1,000 180,000 laying hens, which is 1,800 animal units. This conditional use permit is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the requirements and conditions in 3 and 4 above and upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Brookings, if approved, the Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the requirements of this conditional use. This conditional use permit is not used within three years of the date granted. It shall be invalid. Dated this third day of August 2021. Any additions to the findings of facts? Mr. Chairman, I would concur with the findings of facts and, and uh, also uh, thank the applicants for a very complete application. It was very informative and it covered all the bases, uh, much more so than I've seen in other applications, and we appreciate that. Thank you, you Mr. One question you want to add in there, open lots to be vetted or anything like that, or have them follow best management practices? I think that's fine. Okay. Seeing that then, Richard, would you call the vote? Troyan. Yes. Jensen. Yes. Erickson. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Kleinjohn. Vanderwall. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Starhog. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you. Agenda item 15, department reports. Okay, one second.
cookie, Dale. Keep your cookie down there. What's that? Oh, yeah, but they got a whole pile of cookies down there. I found one hidden in the bottom of the nut. Yeah. I waited until everybody got there. All right, on to my staff report. We will be having a special meeting coming up here on September 7th at 8 a.m. This will be in regards to updating our zoning ordinance for the um, cannabis dispensaries coming up here. It will be a joint meeting with the county commission again. Um, it will be at 8 o'clock in the morning and then We'll do our public hearing on the um, requirements of the dispensary, which we have laid out in a template from First District and other offices, and will be re uh, reviewed by the state's attorney's office and using their guidance on that. So um, it'll be a joint meeting on that morning, and I'll send, as soon as we have the final, the rough draft and the final draft done, I'll send them out to you guys, to the board to review, but it will be added underneath the commercial section of the zoning ordinance. So dispensaries would have to be located on a minimum of a three-acre parcel on a paved county, state, or federal highway is where they would be required to be located. And the county is required to have at least one in the county or allow one in there. So um, we'll get this information to you, and um, that will be the uh, special meeting on September 7th at 8 a.m. in the morning. So we will send that date out if you can make it. We need at least majority of the board members here present for that. So I will be gone. Yes. Yep. They yeah, got that. Don't. No. Okay. So you said September seventh. September seventh. Yes. Okay. okay. And then you said that we're the county's required to at least allow one. Yes. Yeah. I am twenty six requires the counties to allow one dispensary it's in both communities one dispensary so you could logically have nine dispensaries with communities in the county and then the, in addition to that the county has to allow one if there's an application so you'd have 10 now logically you're not going to have this is medical dispensaries this isn't mm -hmm. recreational marijuana it's medical dispensaries only common sense basically says we're not going to have that many applications because nobody would, would have a business model that would succeed. So we'll probably not even see one in the county, but we have to allow for one. And again, if we control it with the commercial district, as Richard had said, uh, what you have there then is is if they're there, I, I, tell them how many commercial districts you got. You got that information with you? Yes, there are, right. There, there are very many. Right now in Brookings County, we have five pieces of property that are zoned commercial. Two of them are wind tower operations and maintenance buildings. One is Skyview Junction. The other one is the soybean plant. The other one is Corlands. It used to be the old auto parts recycler um, parts place east and south of Volga. Right, and that tough, was tough place for a dispensary, but uh, the fact remains is they could apply to rezone a piece of three acre property along the state highways and the paved roads. And we would have to approve that before they could even apply for a dispensary permit. So I don't see an awful lot of action on our part other than uh, we'll look at the paperwork, please look at it, read it and ask Richard any questions or the state's attorney's office if you've got questions. Uh, we do need to go through this. We will then be looking later on down the road at if it gets through the court service or the court case on recreational marijuana where we will probably have to address issues of uh, uh, growing manufacturing and uh, uh, what was the other one it was growing manufacturing and something else anyway the fact of the matter is is that growing is is one thing it's for uh, even recreational marijuana will probably be grown indoors there's very uh, oh it's testing there's very high testing requirements for people to sell this stuff to THC content. So that has, that's a testing facility. So we would have to then incorporate zones that would allow for testing facilities. 
growing facilities and manufacturing facilities. Growing facilities are generally indoors in a greenhouse type of a very controlled environment. And so we'd be having to look at regulations for those. So that's going to take some extra work when that comes down the pipe after the court case is done. So manufacturing is done in a separate facility and usually a separate business from the growing facility. The grower sells it to the manufacturer who then has to make sure it's tested before they make gummy bears out of it or whatever they do. So it, you know, it, don't think of what we're doing on the 7th as recreational. It's strictly a medical uh, dispensary type ordinance that we're working on at this particular time. I think it's pretty straightforward and simple for us. And Luke, you can chime in if you've got other information. But that's as I understand it at this particular point. So we have to go through this process because we have to have it in place by October or something or other. November 1st. November 1st. So there's some tight time frames to get this done. So will this be... Yeah, I guess I'll just, Luke here, I'll, I'll put a fine point on a couple of points that... Uh, Commissioner Bartley pointed out was that I, I think the initial uh, knee-jerk reaction to what was said was that we have to have one. Uh, not necessarily have to have one, we have to allow for one. The ordinance has to be listed in a manner that would allow for the ability to, for someone to make the ask. Uh, and it, it can't be, you know, it's only allowed at the bottom of a lake. It's got to be something that's realistic. And that's where the commercial aspect more than likely comes in for the county. Uh, and then the other aspect, as far as testing, growing, that sort of thing, what Brookings County is looking at is very similar to a lot of the other counties where the idea is just that we just need to have a little more time. Uh, we just frankly don't have a lot of time to make this decision now that the rules are out there. I know that the um, point was made that in theory you may have up until November 1st. However, it could be as soon as October 4th that those rules are established and any of those emergency or ordinances would expire. So that's where the urgency comes in. That's why you're holding a special meeting. Thank you, Luke. Just as a point of information, if anyone re would like copies of what appraisers have been given for valuing a marijuana growing facility I'd be happy to share it with the county zoning board or anybody I've been through a few of these classes it's highly secure cameras gates secures if they follow the same ones that they're doing in Cal uh, Colorado in California uh, we're not obviously monitoring the doctors that issue the medicine but that's where a lot of the loopholes are coming in is just like having a people who need a comfort pet, there are people who need a comfort smoke and that they can't control that because the doctors will issue those. It's called comforting. That's just the future. Mm -hmm. No, other thing we'll be looking at, I'm not sure if it'll be September yet, but we could, we're gonna be starting to ramp up the joint jurisdiction update again. Uh, we're gonna first of all have a get together meeting with the county and the city planning commission bring us up to speed where we've been where we're at and then take off from there where we're going to go to bring everybody up to speed because um there's a lot of new faces on here and the paces that were we're in there in the initial stages of that are no longer with us so um bring everybody up to speed on that and um luke will help us get going on that and also we're going to be getting back on to the county zoning ordinance update reviewing them with the state's attorney's office, make sure we have everything on there. And we'll be bringing that back to the board here. We have that more of a final copy done. So we've got some busy months coming up ahead of us. So with the comments that Jan Sanderson gave initially, will there be time for people like him to have input into that process? Or if we were looking for a citizen at large because of his history, of being on the zoning and county activity way back when yep we've had that input already on there now it's kind of to the legal stage and when we go through we'll have meetings on it we'll take it section by section at that time they would be able to put their input on on it and then at that time we can go back and decide if we want to change that or not and then bring it back again if you do 
with the final document. So his information was valuable. Just listening to him about the reason why they did it back then, but that's different than what we might have been told. So. Right. Yep. And Daryl's dad was a uh, father was on the zoning board. He has insight issues or insight on that yeah. also when he was on the zoning board at that same time. So. Yep, we'll take that all into consideration. So, and that's all that I have. Any need for an Mr. Objective? Chair? This is go ahead. This Luke. is Luke. I I just wanted to I just want to double down on what Richard had said. Is that with the discussions ramping up as on joint jurisdiction ordinance? Again, I I think the idea is going to be that we're going to try to get the draft that was prepared and being reviewed out to all of you board members again to have because again as Richard said there were a lot of there's there are a lot of new faces on that group we may just kind of go through just a introductory meeting again uh, hopefully in September if it works for both the city and the county and then we'll start going a little bit harder after that we'll have to work on timing of that but that's just kind of where I see that going too and for what it's worth you'll see my smiling face there uh, and slowing down your meeting in person thanks correct me if i'm wrong luke but weren't we currently arguing over the city wellhead protection district yeah that's where we left off but i really feel like we more or less need to catch ourselves back up on how we got there okay so i i think we'll catch up there there were really three key issues that needed to be discussed of which we were almost all the way through one of them and then uh a germ showed up and we slowed down. Well, that concludes department reports. Is there any need for an executive session? No. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion, Diedrich. Second, Gatsky. Meeting adjourned.